Mr. Rogers once said, there's a part of all of us that longs to know that even what is most difficult can be worked out and changed by love. Often, those who have experienced the most profound difficulties in life are the ones who are the most able to listen and care deeply about others because they have been there. Additionally, there is a quote often attributed to Dr. Steve Maraboli that reflects a similar sentiment. The strongest people are not those who show strength in front of us, but those who win battles we know nothing about. The most caring and compassionate people are often the ones who have experienced the deepest pain and don't want others to go through the same. This idea that those who have experienced deep suffering often become the most compassionate because they don't want others to endure what they have. This resonates deeply with me and I see it in the eyes of Prince Harry. Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, is a man shaped by profound experiences, some joyous, others deeply traumatic. His journey has been one of resilience, growth, and an unwavering commitment to compassion. To truly understand the man he is today, we must delve into the key moments of his life that have shaped his character and fueled his determination to advocate for others. It was a brisk autumn evening in 2024 when Prince Harry stepped onto the stage at the Well Child Awards, an event dear to his heart. As he stood before the audience, his presence commanded the room, not with grandeur, but with the warmth of a man deeply connected to the cause he champions. Good evening, everybody. Um, is everyone having a good time? Yeah. Is everybody having a good time? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's wonderful to be back here with you all for the 19th uh, annual World Child Awards. To tonight's award winners, congratulations. A huge congratulations, you little legends. I salute you, we salute you. Thank you for your courage, your perse perseverance, your kindness, and of course, your sense of humor. He greeted the crowd, his voice soft yet firm, as if speaking not just to those present, but to the very souls of the children and families whose lives he has touched. In front of him were children who have fought battles many couldn't imagine. Children with complex medical conditions, resilient beyond measure, and parents who had become heroes in their own right. Prince Harry's speech wasn't merely a ceremonial address. It was a conversation filled with deep admiration and respect. As he spoke of courage, perseverance, and kindness, one couldn't help but see reflections of his own life battles in his words. What Harry sees in these children, their relentless strength in the face of adversity, 
is not so different from his own story. Born into the public eye, carrying the weight of a title and the legacy of a beloved mother, Harry's life has been anything but ordinary. Yet, like the children he honored, that night he has learned to fight for his happiness, his family, and his sense of purpose. Ah, uh, yes. Greetings, my esteemed viewers. I trust you're mildly entertained by today's episode of Majesty Sussex Report. I mean, it's not quite tea with the Queen, not that Queen, the other Queen. Thank you. But one does what one can, doesn't one? Now, before you get too comfortable, might I remind you to bestow a like upon this humble video? Oh, and subscribing, well, it's terribly fashionable, you know. All the royals are doing it, or so I've heard in the servant halls. And as for that notification bell, well, ring it if you must. It ensures you don't miss our thrilling gossip about the Duke and Duchess of somewhere or another. I do love a good scandal. I mean, <laughs> thoughtful discussion. So go on, engage with the channel, dear. It keeps the gossip flowing. And frankly, who doesn't love a bit of drama? And with that, I bid you farewell, for now. Carry on and do be sure to come back, won't you? Harry's story begins with a radiant present of his mother, Princess Diana, a woman whose warmth, love, and compassion seemed boundless. For Harry, she was not just a mother, but his safe haven in a world that often felt cold and rigid. When Diana tragically died in 1997, Harry was just 13 a tender age for any child to lose a parent, let alone in such a public and devastated manner. The world watched as Harry, shoulders hunched and eyes hollowed, walked behind his mother's coffin, forced to mourn, not in private, but on the global stage. William and I walked up and down the crowds outside Kensington Palace, smiling, shaking hands, as if we were running for office. Hundreds and hundreds of hands were thrust continually into our faces, the fingers often wet. From what, I wondered? Tears, I realized. I disliked how those hands felt, more I hated how they made me feel. Guilty. Why were all these people crying when I wasn't, and hadn't? I wanted to cry. And I tried to, because Mummy's life had been so sad that she felt the need to disappear to invent this massive charade. But I couldn't squeeze out one drop. Maybe I'd learned too well, absorbed too deeply the ethos of the family, that crying wasn't an option, ever. Standing before the flag-draped coffin, I asked myself, is Mummy a patriot? What does Mummy really think of Britain? Has anyone bothered to ask her? When will I be able to ask it myself? I can't recollect anything the family said in that moment, to each other or to the coffin. I don't recall a word that passed between me and Willie, though I do remember people around us saying the boys look shell-shocked. Nobody bothered to whisper, as if we were so shell-shocked that we'd gone deaf. There was some discussion about the next day's funeral. Per the latest plan, the coffin would be pulled through the streets on a horse-drawn carriage by the King's Troop while Willie and I followed on foot. It seemed a lot to ask of two young boys. Several adults were aghast. Mummy's brother, Uncle Charles, raised hell. We can't make these boys walk behind their mother's coffin. It's barbaric. An alternative plan was put forward. Willie would walk alone. He was 15 after all. Leave the younger one out of it. Spare the spare. This alternative plan was sent up the chain. Back came the answer. It must be both princes. To garner sympathy, presumably. Uncle Charles was furious, but I wasn't. I didn't want Willie to undergo an ordeal like that without me. Had the roles been reversed, he'd never have wanted me, indeed allowed me, 
Introduced Harry to a world where grief was consumed by millions, where his pain was fodder for headlines. The boy who once had a loving, nurturing mother found himself adrift in an ocean of royal duty, scrutiny, and emotional isolation. From that day, a deep wound festered, one that would shape his view of the media, the institution of royalty, and even his place in the world. Harry's relationship with his father, King Charles III, has been complex, to say the least. From the beginning, there were whispers that Charles had hoped for a daughter, and Harry's resemblance to his mother's side of the family, complete with that signature red hair, only further alienated him. While the public feud Charles as a dutiful royal, Harry experienced a different reality. There was a distance between father and son that could not easily be bridged, especially as Harry grew into the role of despair, always secondary to his elder brother, William the heir. This secondary status wasn't just ceremonial, it was emotional. I didn't think it could get worse. What a grievous mistake it is for a member of the royal family, when considering the media, to imagine that things can't get worse. Weeks later, the same newspaper put me on the front page again. Harry's had an accident. I'd broken a bone in my thumb playing rugby. No big deal. But the paper decided to make out that I was on life support. Bad taste, under any circumstances. But a little more than a year after mummy's alleged accident, Come on, fellas. I dealt with the British press all my life, but they'd never before singled me out. In fact, since Mummy's death, an unspoken agreement had governed press treatment of both her sons, and the agreement went like this. Lay off. Let them have their education in peace. Apparently, that agreement had now expired, because there I was, splattered across the front page, made out to seem a delicate flower. Or an ass. Or both. And knocking on death's door, I read the article several times. Despite the somber subtext, something's very wrong with Prince Harry. I marveled at its tone. Lucky. My existence was just fun and games to these people. I wasn't a human being to them. I wasn't a 14-year-old boy hanging on by his fingernails. I was a cartoon character. A glove puppet to be manipulated and mocked for fun. So what if their fun made my already difficult days more difficult? Made me a laughing stock before my schoolmates? Not to mention the wider world. So what if they were torturing a child? All was justified because I was royal. And in their minds, royal was synonymous with non-person. Centuries ago, royal men and women were considered divine. Now, they were insects. What fun to pluck their wings. Harry was often sidelined, used to deflect attention away from royal scandals or controversies. As he grew older, he became clear 
that the monarchy, an institution he was born into, expected him to play a role of service, not necessarily of significance. Yet, deep down, Harry craved purpose, meaning and connection, things that often elude him within the confines of royal life. Being despair was not just a title for Harry. It became a defining element of his life. While his brother William was groomed for kingship, Harry was left to find his own way, often feeling like a pawn in the royal machinery. The media, hungry for stories, frequently portrayed him as the reckless younger brother, using him to elevate William as the responsible future king. Behind the scenes, the mach machinery of royal courtiers were at play, and Harry found himself increasingly at odds with the very family he once sought to protect. Perhaps the deepest betrayal came with the realization that his family, his own flesh and blood, had allowed and sometimes encouraged media narratives that painted him and his wife, Megan, in a negative light to protect others in the family. This hurt and ran deep. And it is set Harry on a path of self-discovery and eventually distance from the institution that had shaped his life. Out of this pain, however, came purpose. Harry's experiences with loss, betrayal, and public scrutiny has given him a unique perspective one that drives his passion to protect his own family and to advocate for those who are vulnerable. His marriage to Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, and their children have become the anchor that grounds him. Harry has made it clear that he will do everything in his power to ensure that his children never experience the same pain and isolation that he endured. Yet, his compassion extends beyond his family. As a patron of organizations like The Well Child and Centre Ballet, Harry channels his personal trauma into service. His work with sick children, particularly through Well Child, showcases his empathy and deep emotional connection to those in need. He speaks to the children not as a distant royal figure, but as someone who understands suffering and has the emotional scars to prove it. In his speech, whether at Well Child or during a storytelling evening at the Mamohato Children's Center in Lesotho for Center Valley, Harry's authenticity shines through and through. His voice trembles with sincerity and his eyes soften as he listens to the stories of resilience and strength. He is a man who not only hears the pain of others, but feels it deeply, drawing from his own life experiences to uplift and encourage those around him. Prince Harry's story is far from over. He has been called upon to do many things 
He's also been called many things by the media. Rebellious, controversial, even naive. They've even tried to infantilize him. But to those who truly see him, I mean truly see the man, Harry is a man of deep compassion and resilience. He refuses to let his past or the betrayal he has faced define him. Instead, he has chosen to lead with kindness, with empathy, and a fierce commitment to protecting those who are vulnerable. In many ways, Harry is a living testament to his mother's legacy. Like Diana, like Princess Diana, he walks through life with an open heart, unafraid to speak out against injustice and to challenge the norms that seek to confine him. His story is one of transformation, a journey from pain to purpose, from despair to a man who has found his own way in the world. And as he continues to advocate for the causes close to his heart, mental health, children's well-being, digital safety, Prince Harry reminds us all that true strength lies not in power of position, but in the courage to live authentically, to love fiercely, and to protect what matters most. <laughs>